this is a fucking crazy clip, right? It's gone kind of viral on social media of this young lady essentially complaining about the fucking sex scene in Oppenheimer. Kind of wild, right? Kind of wild to hear this because I legitimately feel the sex scene in Oppenheimer was kind of tame. Obviously, it was a bit surprising to see because Christopher Nolan has never really had, you know, full on sex scenes. He may have had implied sex scenes here and there. I can think of the one with the magicians. There might have been a couple in there. But for the most part, he doesn't really have sex scenes in his movies. That's why it was a big deal when people found out that there was going to be a sex scene in Oppenheimer, especially considering the subject matter of the movie. But I thought the most uncomfortable part of the movie, or sort of the sex scene, wasn't actually the sex. It was more so the after sex shit where they were just sitting around on these dirty dirty frumpy chairs stark naked and if you sat on those type of chairs you know how fucking itchy they are and how uncomfortable they can be against your skin so just sitting there with your balls hanging out is a little bit mad right having your pussy lips all over that fucking chair doesn't make any sense to me but it's also surprising to see people legitimately say that the sex scene made them feel uncomfortable but it also kind of reminds me a little bit of my upbringing so let me play a little bit of this clip for you so you can see what this person's saying and this is kind of been courtesy of i think a tiktok that they had it on but i'm going to play the video for you now so you can hear what they say okay so i researched I research everything before we watch it, but especially this movie, obviously I heard about it. Yes, we wanted to see it. It has an amazing rating. Um, we prepared ourselves. I didn't know when the scene was going to happen, and I also didn't understand how the scene was happening. I thought it was just <laughs> several minutes straight of what it wasn't. I love that. I just realized she, what, she doesn't even say sex. She refuses to say even the word sex. I fucking love this. I love this like I love this level of modesty to be honest. It's kind of refreshing. I'm not going to lie. It was actually broken up into like it would do a, a flash of that and then it would do a flash of normal life and then it would do a flash of the scene and then it was like very, you know, back and forth. So it was really difficult to avoid it. But obviously my husband and I talk about everything. If we go anywhere or we go see anything, even if it's a concert, movie, um, an event, we have a game plan. We talk about things. Like, what if you get triggered? What if I get triggered? Really, the problem isn't what if you get triggered. The problem is what if I get triggered? <laughs> I don't want my night to be ruined by being triggered by something on a screen. Uh huh. So essentially, um, what we did was when the scene came up, when things were happening, he literally closed his eyes and laid his head on my shoulder. <laughs> like, like this is my shoulder. Like this is my shoulder. <sighs> and then I would just like let him know whenever it was over. And it literally, I will tell you what right now, took nothing away from the story. Him not looking at the screen during <laughs> did not change the line, did not change anything. Um, have a plan and talk about it before you go. So, um, don't get me wrong. It's a little bit insane because the sex scene in Oppenheimer is very tame. But it also kind of reminds me of my upbringing, which is a fairly, a very religious household, very conservative. And so conservative that when I was growing up living at home, my parents would sometimes change the channel when we were watching an animal show and the animals were fucking mating. Like if it was a show and, you, you know, I don't know, fucking David Attenborough show about the fucking animals in the jungle and shit or whatever it may be. And the animals started mating on screen. My parents would fucking either turn away or change the channel. Like it was legitimately insane how fucking, you know, um, conservative and, you know, very uh, modest they were in that regard. But I sometimes look back onto that time, sometimes and laugh and think that's fucking ridiculous. But I also think to myself, maybe that might have informed how chill I am comparative to my experience in a church. Because I went to a church between the ages of like, no, I was heavy in church, heavy, like going Sunday and then going to fucking youth church and then going midweek. I was heavy in church from what, ages of probably 15 to 22. I spent every week in church, every week without fail. It's 15 to 22, I think about that around that time, right? And maybe 22 was about the first time I was probably started to go out in a scene and drink a lot and whatever, start doing drugs. And that's when I suddenly started to kind of pull away from the church and have sort of other interests. But around those type of years, I felt like because church was so much of my life and because I had a very 
kind of like chill, modest, um, non-vulgar, non-sweary type of life. It also kind of gave me a good base when I did go out into the real world, where I think for the most part, you know, sometimes people say, oh, if you go to a Christian school, or if you go to like, a, if girls go to like an all Catholic school, they usually are super freaky because they're not allowed to do anything, right? I think it's how I had the opposite effect on me. I think it made me chill. It made me relax because I had the opportunity to kind of grow up in my sort of like, you know, adolescent years where I'm, uh, where I had all that fucking frustration or whatever it may be, it was sort of kind of tamed out of me at church. So by the time I did get out into the real world, when I was in my early twenties, I was just enjoying whatever I was enjoying, but it wasn't, be it wasn't enjoying it like being thirsty because I had no opportunity to do the things I wanted to do in church because unfortunately the church I did go to it wasn't your conventional church right big up my KICC mandem but that church people got up to shit so people were able to kind of dibble and dabble in both things but I think in general because we had such a big um, contingency of young people in that church who came from various walks of life and shit it kind of legitimately gave you a very good base of like you know, of friends and ex life experiences and it allowed you to kind of grow up without needing to grow up on the streets. By the time you get out on the streets, you've done all your growing up, you've seen most things so nothing really surprised you, which is weird to say because you it really should be the opposite. Church should be a safe haven where you don't need to kind of interact with the things that you see on the outside in church, but unfortunately sometimes it can bleed into the other and I think that kind of helped in the long term. But in this video in particular, taking this video into account, I think it's quite refreshing to have this because I saw somebody complain about it the other day. I think it's um my girl called Seal, the DJ online. I think that's how you pronounce her name. If it's not, I apologize. But I think it's pronounced like C E I L, right? DJ. Seal. Seal DJ. Let's see if there's a one. Yeah, that's the one, right? And I follow her on fucking social media. Big up her. She's always really funny. She has some really cool insights on DJing and whatnot. And she's played that Panorama Bar a few times. So congratulations to her. And she's got some pretty decent mixes up on Whore as well. And I remember her saying recently the other day, or just in recently over the years, um, that she gets annoyed when she logs onto Twitter sometimes and has to see, you know, a random person's pussy. Like she might follow a couple of people who are into sex work or maybe just the algorithm kind of plops certain adult materials on your feed and you just want to kind of, you know, shit post. You want to sound off on a particular news story or cultural item and here you have a full fucking sex scene on your fucking timeline. And Twitter's the worst for it because even if you don't like that stuff, it will somehow come on your timeline because for some reason, Twitter has like a very loosey-goosey approach when it comes to X-rated material. So I think in a world where there's probably too much porn online, it is quite refreshing to have people out there who legitimately have this perspective on the world, who are able to be a little bit modest, who are not that really into, you know, overt, you know, sexual acts online or in movies and shit. And they talk about it from a very logical, sensible, grown up point of view. I think it's somewhat refreshing to see that because if we're all, all if we're all okay with having sex work all over social media, which it is what it is, if we're all empowering people to do what they want to do with their bodies and have full autonomy, I also think the opposite needs to exist where there is a platform, there is a space for people who don't want to see that stuff on social media, who don't want to live that sort of lifestyle. Think about that video of that woman who's friends with um, Tiny's, um, T.I.'s wife saying, you know, I'll, I'll probably put a clip in here if you haven't heard it before. We go eat together. We play with her kids together. And I do her hair. I don't know nothing about that lifestyle, whatever y'all got going on, because that's not me. But um, I think of that clip and it kind of is, it does ring true. I do think there are people out there who maybe aren't religious, who just are fed up with seeing so much sex on their timeline. So maybe when they're watching a Christopher, sorry, a Christopher Nolan movie, the last thing they want to see is sex, for real. Because they have so much of it on their timeline, they legitimately think he's one of the best directors and you know walking on this earth right now, which I do think he is. And they usually trust him to make a really good movie that doesn't have those overt sexual scenes in it. And maybe even thinking about it now, because he's never had them in there, maybe there's a whole scene of people who live a modest life who maybe only watch Christopher Nolan movies because they know by and large you're going to be able to watch this movie because it won't have any. It, it might have some adult themes, but it won't have any overt sexual 
kind of scenes in there, which is a big thing because you'd imagine a lot of movies, especially nowadays in Hollywood, um, especially if they have big male lead roles, they're always going to have a scene where the guy takes off his top and he's ripped and shit or the woman is in her underwear. So it's always going to be those kind of moments because they feel like those are the moments might kind of get, you know, get their movie to become more popular so they can kind of recoup the cops of the movie that they made. Bloody blah, blah, blah. So there might be a particular group of people who, out there who probably saw Christopher Nolan as their guy because he's modest. And now all of a sudden he does open a movie that you don't think would need a sexual scene in it and he's got the most sexual scene in he's ever had in all these movies and i can imagine why they wanted to close their eyes but it is quite funny just to kind of see these people out there in, in you know in social media saying what they're saying but like i said i think it is somewhat refreshing somewhat encouraging and we need more of it just to kind of counterbalance the overt sexual stuff that exists online in my personal opinion but again what do i know